Hello, hello, welcome to Mindset to Results. And uh, today our guest is Shine Lynch. He is an um, entrepreneur with big experience. And uh, he is a business architect and helps companies to turn their vision into reality. He is author of multiple books and also achieved many rewards for helping companies with his specific technology. Hi, Shane. Good afternoon, Elena. How are you doing? Great, great. I am excited to speak to you. Yeah, and I'm del thank you very much for the opportunity to be on your show. You're welcome. You're welcome. Such people as you uh, create so much value and you are the light of this world. And uh, we always have to put the light on the table to shine. <laughs> You're very, I appreciate your kind words. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is what our podcast is about, to bring the knowledge, to bring the expertise so people can do better uh, and live better lives. Tell us a little bit about your story, how you started your entrepreneurial journey and um, why you do what you do today. Oh, that's a really good question, Elena. And so where do we start? I'm an engineer by trade. So I studied manufacturing engineering in college. I believe that's relevant because I'm very systematic in how I do things. And I became over time a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt. Then in 2007, after working with consulting firms for a long time, I set up a business in the construction sector in renewable energy, myself and my business partner. And we were doing fantastic until the recession of 2008. And we, we weren't short of business. We were short of getting paid for business. And, and the conveyor belt money just stopped. So things became very, very tough very quickly. So we, we were faced with a choice because we were owed half a million euros and we owed probably um, 250,000 on the other side. So we, we had 12 people working for us and we were faced with a decision. Should we liquidate the business or should we battle through? And we opted to battle through because like we had people working for us who had families who wouldn't get any other jobs in the construction sector. So we felt the responsibility to them to figure this out. And it was tough. Like we had to figure out how to deliver value in every core part of our business. And we did. It was a journey. It was tough, but we turned that business around. And then after four years, when things settled down, I had a desire then to get into a role where I could help companies do what I did during the recession. And that is thrive in good times and bad. So I sold my part of that company and that company still exists today. They're still doing very well. In fact, I met one of the owners just over the weekend for um, a coffee and a catch up. So we're still good friends and they're doing very well. It's great to hear the story. And, but then since then I've been helping companies and I toyed around for a while of testing a few things that then I realized, well, I think I need to sort of brush up on my consulting skills a little. So I joined a consulting firm and then got headhunted by another company. And, and I knew, I, I knew when I was signed up to this company, I turned them down about three times. And when they asked me the last time, they gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. And I took it, but I knew in my heart and soul, I sold myself to a very bad person or a, I, I sold myself for the wrong reasons. And it turned out to be a very bad person. After six months, I decided to leave and I walked out of the company, went to my family place in Spain. And I literally had one of these moments. What? the hell do I do now? And this was in August, 2013. And then I decided it was time to set up my own business properly. And I was going to teach myself what I know by writing my first book. And, and that book I wrote in 2013, it still forms the foundations of how I help companies today. And it was a very good experience for me to take what I knew in my head and all those chaotic thoughts and put them in a structured book. And, and obviously my thoughts have evolved, but that was 2013. So I've been doing what I've been doing now in its current form for the last 11 years. And it's literally, it's coming up on my 11 year anniversary next month, nearly in, in the start of August. So that's how, that's how I got to be where I am, Elena. And what I love about what I do is even a part of me as my early days of my career, 
once I've learned to everything, I, I need to move on. I need to keep learning. A part of who I, I am, part of my DNA is to continue learning. Whenever I was working for a company, great roles, but I got, once I learned enough and I couldn't learn anymore, I had to move. The pain of staying there was too much, was, was worse than the pain of having to figure out to get another new role. So it complements who I am because I love learning. I love seeing new companies, new leaders, new cultures, new people, and new problems to solve. So every time I work with a new customer, I get that and I love it. And it builds up my experience and how I can take great strategies that one company has applied and implemented well, and then help another company apply them in very different sectors. So I love that diversity. And that's my motivation to keep going, Elena. And that's why I love what I do. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much. And um, it is a very big uh, <clears throat> transformation from being employee for the company and becoming owner of your own company, right? It is totally mm. different mindset. So would you like to share what changed in your mindset, in your perception, how you see yourself, how you take responsibility, how you make decision when it comes to building your own business? Yeah, an, another big question, Elena. And the way I describe this is it's a difference between a want to do something and a need to do something, right? And people can want to do things all the time, but then things get in their way and they struggle and then they don't do them. When you have an absolute need, Elena, there's no want that comes into the equation. You have to do it. If I don't get up and, and, and earn money or find customers and earn money, I don't get paid, right? So it's a necessity for me to figure it out. So it's that important. So like most entrepreneurs, we work a lot more than our 40 hour weeks. We work mostly seven days a week, not full days, but it's part of who we are. So in terms of the mindset, it's actually made me better at me first and foremost. And it's, it's, I'm more results driven. I'm, I'm process driven. And obviously results don't always work out, but it's about continuous improvement, continuous learning, continuous development. So I believe it makes me a better version of me first and foremost. And that's really, really important. And then it makes me a better person for my clients and how I help companies because it helps me, it forces me to learn about even like a simple things. Well, not simple things, but even a great example would be neuroscience, right? I have to motivate people to make change in their companies. And when I come into their companies, Many of the people will resist me, Elena, because like, and I've heard this a lot. They say it to my face, who the hell do you think you are coming in your suit? You know, nothing about our processes and how can you make improvements? And I always say, remind them, I'm not here to tell you what you do. I'm here to facilitate a mechanism so I can get the best out of you, right? So I get you engaged in the business and you, you're the people with the expertise on the ground and I need to get you to open up your ideas and want to. So I have to build very, very good relationships with people. So I have to be very smart. And I, and I say the word to influence and not manipulate because my goal is to get the win-win for the people on the ground and the business leaders. It has to win for both parties. So a big part of what I do is influence, building really good facilitation workshops and influencing people to make them better at them. So if I can make them better at them, they're more open and inclined to help the business and enjoy their role. So again, a big part of that is learning about like their strengths. And it, that's something I had to learn myself. What are my strengths? And I've done a lot of research and to figure out how to define your own strengths. And once I realized this was very beneficial for me, a big part of what I do is teach how, to, what about making your business a strengths-based business where you get the best out of your team because they're doing stuff they love to do. If they're really good at something, enjoy doing it, put them in a position where they use their skills and build strength-based businesses. So it's interesting for them. They win and the business wins as well. Yeah, great. You you mentioned so many important things. So let's discuss them a little bit more. Uh, that the first thing you said that you had to believe Right, like you had to believe that uh, you could do it. Right, this is the first change and shift in mm. 
mindset when we come from in being employee to being a business owner is because if you don't believe that you can it means that you will not even do anything right like if you don't believe that you can you will lose the game even before you start it so Absolutely. The first, so the first biggest shift is the taking responsibility because you know that it is only you nobody is going to save you and bring business to you it is just you who have to get up every day know what you want know what you want to do and believe that you can get those results and see those results as already achieved yes mm -hmm. and act as person as if already it is done from that perception it gives you power and it gives you motivation and it gives you that um, inside uh, energy to mm. wake every day and do things because it is not easy to change that mindset because people who work for companies they uh, they use that they are told what to do and they just do the tasks which other people bring to them and they know that they just do this task and they get paid yes and when it comes to having your own business it is totally different uh, picture nobody brings your tasks this is you who should bring your task who should make your plan who should keep yourself accountable who should do your uh, your job who should follow up and who should encourage yourself <laughs> yourself right mm. it's <laughs> and, such a big yeah it's such a big point elena and even during my times like i had, did have some really great bosses right and managers but I also had managers that demotivated me as well. So I had managers. I was always bursting with ideas. I was always motivated when I was young to share my ideas with, with managers. And I thought they were really good ideas. And these managers, and you know, when you're young in your career, you assume every manager is a good manager and they're going to help you. And I realized after a while, when they weren't listening to my ideas, they said, no, it's not the right time to do something like this or it's not a good idea. That was very demotivating for me and it actually hurt i remember a few cases when i was younger my friend it actually hurt me emotionally and i needed i knew i needed to change because i was so convinced i had good ideas and it took me becoming literally first of all a consultant working for consulting firms to start to see that belief that my ideas were actually good but it was a bit of a journey elena it didn't it didn't happen overnight it was, it was like step-by-step step belief. And eventually what, what the biggest point of belief for me, Elena, is that when I started to really build my own mechanisms, now I can believe in a process. Even if I don't know a company, I've developed a mechanism so I can learn very effectively, very quickly and effectively what a company needs through building a mechanism. So now I have belief in my mechanism which serves me very, very well. And then by believing in your mechanism, you believe in you. It's a journey. It's a process. So it's not a, a, a switch that you can flick in your head. It's a journey that you must get on the road. And I, I feel fortunate enough that I took those roads and put myself in positions where I can learn. Because a lot of people don't, Elena, and I see this in business. People um, get institutionalized. And they just go through the motions. They go into jo their jobs and exchange time for money. And by the way, it's funny you mentioned the word belief. One of like, if I talk about fears for a sec, one of my biggest fears in life is to become that person where I just exchanged because I believe I have something to offer inside and I want to share it. We all, and, and something I believe deeply when I meet people and the more I learn about people who are in those roles currently, I believe we all have superpowers. And again, your strengths and your superpowers are very much aligned. And it's about finding those superpowers and allowing those people to shine with them. And when you get that balance right, it's amazing how you can change people and amazing how they can contribute. And I've seen it. And, and I'm even just getting shivers down my spine about some of the transformations I've seen with some of the companies and teams I've worked with because it's amazing what you can do when you put your belief in people and and that they can do it they, they they instead of coming in for time exchanging time for money they come in and they want to do a great job yes that's why i told that you are the light yeah and light should shine and uh 
uh, how it happens that if somebody is in the cave and it is dark there and you come with the candle with the light and you show them the way which they didn't see before exactly exactly so, that's a great way to describe it yes because people have paradigms like there are family paradigms there are companies paradigms which company have right those mm -hmm. certain uh, way how they do things and it is not always the best but it is just how the things are and this is how you said that when you come and you show them your vision which you see where they can be which they did don't see initially they reject because it is natural to reject something that which is new and which is not uh, correspond with the way how they used to do things and this is their uh, comfort zone and of course the first reaction will be reject who you are to come here and tell us what to do right but mm. then only it takes time for them to i, I liked how you say see, said that you help them to see what they can do right that you help them to see their potential as individuals and all as team members and also mm. as company and when they align their potential as individual as team as a company when they can relate their personal goals with company goals this is when they start thinking oh i can do more i can get there my company my team can get there and this is how also where i can get in my life yes so when it all this combines it it um, encourages them to just to think big and mm. discover some potential as individuals and as company part of company yes which they were not aware before and this is when you come with your um, secrets and recipe how to get them all involved in this uh, new process and get great results absolutely and and here's the thing everybody and with very few exceptions they truly want to do a good job elena they truly do want to contribute. And when they see their contributions are important and they feel they're part of a strategy and their contributions are making a difference, then the, the consequence of that is they become fulfilled. And when you have fulfilled, if you have people highly contributing and highly fulfilled, that is the recipe for success in the business. And that's something that it's, a, it's the softer side of business to get right first before you start developing processes and strategies it's about getting the ingredients right as you mentioned and and when you allow people to shine if you open the door so many people want to walk it they do they just want to be heard and they want to be valued and 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 again some statistics now i need to update the last time i looked at gallup and i said i'd give it a few years be post covid to see has it changed much and i haven't checked yet but it's on my agenda but 40% of why people say a company is only for remuneration purposes for money, right? That means approximately 60% plus is for everything else that goes on in the business. That means you've lots of opportunity to ret train, retain, and develop people into highly contributing and highly fulfilled. Because only 40% is for money. Get money off the table. Make sure you're, you're giving fair return for what the people are doing and then work on building that employee experience where people are using their strengths for the good of their business a win-win yes and uh, i think that um, business owners they can have this approach to look at uh, people who come to work at their companies to help them to unleash their potential yes not just to do certain things the way how the company does but create the environment that everyone can come and become creative, bring mm. their talents and gifts and see uh, people, what is their genius? What is their unique talents and gifts and give them that certain way of work where they can become creative and when they can realize their potential. And when people uh, get in this uh, creative environment, then where they get excited and then they see that they have that um, freedom and initiative to decide what they want to do what they want and to, to show the results 
Absolutely. And, and you mentioned something that's very important there. They need to be given time to do this, right? When they go into work, everybody's overwhelmed. Everybody's got workload above and beyond their, their actual capacity. So guess what, Lena? They don't have time to think. They're too busy doing the do. And when I go in to do my audits in the beginning, when I'm assessing a company of where I can help them, I can ask many managers and this, the same answer comes back all the time. I always question the status quo, right? So I asked them, why do you do this this way? And the answer is always, well, that's the way we've always done it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then, then I know that I just need to get people out of their day-to-day -day role, get them in a very nice environment, make them feel relaxed, enjoy the environment. And then we start doing some brainstorming. We look at the processes and then we talk about what's not working well, what is, what do we need to change? And it starts as simple as that. And I make a commitment to them that whatever I want to change has to be for the good of the people first before the business. And once, and obviously I talk to talk, but then I have to walk the walk. I have to prove that I, I, I'm going to do exactly what I said. And once I do that once, Selena, and I build that trust, then trust is built. Then we work better and better. So it's again, it's, it's a journey for me to work with companies. I don't instantly get trust, but I have to prove that I'm on their side. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, companies is not tables, not buildings, not offices. Companies are people, right? So when we make people to come and uh, understand that they are valuable, that they are heard, they're seen, that they are appreciated. And so it is about creating that environment that everybody can feel that he is a creator because we are all creators, yes? And of course, there are certain certain things to do, but um, it is not about doing things hard. Sometimes it just needs, needs a little shift of perception and just different view and do the thing but different way it and it will be much more effective mm. than do things the old way and pushing hard something that doesn't work absolutely and all we're looking for is little improvements often elena sometimes you find the big lift which is rare but but it's good but it's the compounding of the small improvements little by little the marginal gains every single day every single week that over time over the course of the year make substantial improvements and again when you get into that like don't settle for the status quo mindset and want to improve it's amazing what comes out of it and i have a simple saying first we want to do things better and when we've exhausted that we want to do better things and there's no end to those journeys and i've never i've never gotten to the end where a company can't continue to innovate there's no end to it yeah there is no no stop there's no limit because there is always level up and level down and i liked how you said in the beginning that you always had that desire and that hunger to learn more yes that you don't like to stay the same place i can i can relate to this because this is exactly how I was feeling always I always wanted more more knowledge more uh, excitement more books like all because we uh, human beings we cannot stay the same there is nothing the same we are growing every day learning something becoming new version of ourselves or we just go backwards nothing stays the same so it is always up to us and um, it is not good to stay in comfort zone because oh. if people just say, say that, oh, I achieved this and it doesn't matter even what you achieve, you can achieve whatever. But if you just don't have that uh, desire to grow every day, to move forward, you will go backwards. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's so true. There's no such thing as standing still. If you're not moving forward in this world, Elaine, it's moving so fast, you're actually moving backwards. And, and again, why there's no end to improvements? Because the markets are always changing. What customers want is always changing. So you have to stay on top of everything. So there's constant change going on. The only constant is change 
And what I say to clients now, the most two most important strategies are protection and adaptation. Make sure you build a model that you can protect when things go bad. And then from there, continually adapt to the marketplace. Long gone are the days of five-year business plans. You must adapt every quarter and see what's changing and that makes subtle course corrections. The, the best analogy I always use is like a plane, Elena, or a boat. They spend 95% of their course, of their time off course, and they make subtle course corrections all the time to get back on track because of the winds and the, the sea and the currents and everything and all of that. It's the same in business. You're going to spend a lot of time off course and you have to make, you have to get that, those measurements back from the marketplace and your customers to keep making those subtle twi- tweaks. And over the course of the year, you may not think you've changed much because they've been subtle all the, through the course of the year, but by the, after 12 months and you look back, you've made a substantial change. Yes. The rocket fails 99%, right? On the yeah, yeah from the destination and that cybernetic mechanism is picking up the deviation and bringing back to course, right? And that's why it is important for uh, business owners to, because we all have that cybernetic mechanism in our subconscious mind. Yeah, we, we, are, we have that goal-oriented mechanism. That's why it is important to have that goal so clear and know exactly what you want and don't let any circumstances any tribulation get you out and so that mm. uh, commitment and that's why it is so important to write your goals every morning every evening because with this this is like you remind that uh, that cybernetic mechanism you you like doing the settings that it keeps you focused and committed and you know that if you do that, if you're committed, you will succeed. You will get there. It may take, they may be longer time, but this commitment and being focused and seeing in your mind already yourself as you already achieved that, right? This is like mindset, mindset also power. When we use our imagination and we think and feel and act as person who already is there. And when we have that clear picture, it helps us to uh, get back again and again and keep focus and keep moving forward. Yeah, my favorite line, my favorite phrase is keep moving forward. Elena, that's my favorite. No matter how many times you get knocked down, I'm a Rocky fan. So if you can see that, it's about whenever you feel a little bit sorry for yourself and play the victim, I'm, I'm a big Rocky fan. And there's a quote he has, in Rocky Balboa when he's talking to a son who's playing the victim and it's about the sun ain't all sunshines and ra- rainbows the world is a very mean and dark place and it'll bring you to your knees so every time you get hit you have to get up it's not how hard you can get hit it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward because that's how winning is done so that's why I have that on my wall to remind myself daily about the importance of keep moving forward yes and uh also important to know that success is not just a easy thing like some people can look at other successful people and think that oh like they become successful but they don't see so much hard work behind the scene because no, they- right, it is not what some people just show results but they don't show those sleepless nights and those hustles and those maybe crying <laughs> maybe sometimes yeah because it, i i really think that entrepreneurs and business owners should understand that it is the journey right and this journey will be somehow maybe hard right because you have to break those limiting beliefs those different challenges this is how you build yourself this is how you build your resilience and uh, uh, the toughness, right? You need to have that mental toughness because as we spoke before, that when you start your entrepreneurial journey, nobody's there for you. You, you, you have to build it. This is your decision. This is your commitment. And you have to build. And if you, if you want really uh, to have big goals, achieve big goals in life, you should get to that challenges because this is how 
you get trained <laughs> this is how yeah. you get like diamond you get uh shaped over time shape yeah. yes and this is how we get shaped so we it is important to have this attitude towards the challenges as it is just the way to my goals because i asked for that and this is the price which i have to pay i have to go through this but and when we have this understanding this is the price am i willing to pay this price yes because i want to have that otherwise if you don't to have that okay go sleep and you will uh, not have that life but if you want that life if it is really your decision and you see yourself there you should be ready to go through all these challenges well that, that's part of it and uh, like one of my sayings another one of my phrases i like to do hard things on purpose and so i set myself challenges and goals in different parts of my life and i set them so they're above and beyond my current capabilities and in sports so for example i'm, I'm planning to do a uh, 50 mile 80 kilometer ultra marathon over mountains in september way beyond my current capability but why is that relevant to the conversation well it teaches me how to do hard things on purpose so when life gets hard i know to see things as ro hurdles not roadblocks that stop me i know i have a mechanism that okay this is a challenge i'm now in a mindset that i can figure it out i'm not going to be frozen by it or stopped in my tracks it's part of the journey and i gotta figure it out so i love to do hard things on purpose to prepare my mindset for when life gets truly hard yeah it is amazing amazing and when we get to that limits when we just think that it is a limit we cannot do anymore but when we continue doing that is like it is called like second breath <laughs> right like we we uh untap the potential which we were not aware about right like it sometimes it comes like it is so much but when we overcome it we discover something that strength that we had and then we become that next version of ourselves like already with bigger capacity right like we already have those limit limit broken and we expand ourselves so we we can see we can know we, we are wiser we are stronger and more experienced right like like we have we can see much more bigger picture than we did before absolutely and that's it when you keep moving up the the road and the journey and the mountains that you're looking to overcome it's amazing how your world view gets bigger and bigger like the more you see the more you learn the more you do the more you want to learn and see and do it's just compounding all the time and that that's where I, you hear a lot of people say the world's your your oyster you can do whatever you want but you have to start the journey to be able to form that view over time yeah form that view and believe about what is possible for you and yeah, because the only limitation which we have about ourselves is in our mind and if we okay. can break those limits yeah we can see such big picture and then it allows us to start thinking bigger right and when we start thinking bigger and see big picture for us this is how our thoughts feelings and action changes and this is how our results change as well absolutely and there's no end to this journey elena there's there's nothing to stop you from learning more and more not just about the world but about you and what you can what you're capable of there's nothing to stop you. Everybody who's the top in, in what their discipline is, whether it's sports and business, started out as a novice. And through learning and learning and then building good teams around them, they got to the top. But to your point, as you said, you don't see all the hard work they put in the, the background. It's like the iceberg. You only see a small bit up the top. And then mm -hmm. everything underneath is the work, the grafting that they do day in, day out, without giving up which is tough it, it's hard to get to stay doing one thing for your life you look at all the the top international sports stars they do the same thing they want to get that little little bit better all the time they never give up and that's powerful and if they can do it everybody can do it because they were once a nobody 
Yes, and the key secret for this is to find what you really love to do. Mm, that's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, like you said that you were paid well, but you were feeling that you just don't do the right thing, right? And it is not even about money. If you don't feel that you don't do right thing, you just are not at the right frequency. You you just drain drain energy, right? Like you you don't act as your potential, as your capacity. And then when you switched, right? It maybe it was tough to, because because you had to start from zero your own business. Mm -hmm. But this is totally different energy. When we find out what we really love to do, when it is aligned with our values with who we are with our talents gives with our genius even if it is hard like technically because we have to learn and discover so many things which we didn't do before but because we do what we really love to do we get energy like universe provides us with that all necessary energy to become that version who we meant to be mm. yeah and the, the here's the interesting one the universe gives us the energy, but we have to answer the question as well. We have to put our, we have to make that first step forward. And I always find in any given situation, the first step is the most important. And the second step gets a little bit easier. And that's for good or bad. If you step forward into a situation for one time and put yourself, make yourself vulnerable and exposed, the next time you're faced with something, you're more inclined to make that first step forward again. And it gets easier because, you know, nothing is as ever as difficult as your brain makes it out to be. That's your brain. Your brain is a protection mechanism. It doesn't want you to do hard things. It wants you to sit on your couch and be safe because it still thinks you're a hunter gatherer being chased by wild animals and stuff like that. So it wants you to be safe. You have to override that programming to move forward. And, and it's the same if you take this step back anytime it's easier to do it again and again. So anytime I'm presented with an opportunity, I'll always step forward. And even if it scares me, I'll figure it out. My commitment then is to figure it out. If that makes sense. Yeah, this is uh, relates to our spiritual part. Yes, this is mm. our spirit, which is inside us. It always wants to grow. It wants to be exp expressed. Right, and uh, this is how we, if we follow our spirit, we will always move to growth and uh, to learn something, to be more. Because uh, I think that uh, some people who are doing something boring, which they don't like to do, they just in this hypnotic state, in this like uh, loop, doing the same things, as you said, like people just going to work, just selling their time for money. It is like they're, they're killing their spirit, like they don't hear it anymore. But yeah. people who, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. And that it's a shame. And it's partly their fault, partly the company's fault. But at the end of the day, you have to take responsibility for your own mindset and actions. And that was one of the biggest lessons for me in life is to take accountability, stop being the victim. And I think we've all had our moments with that. And it's about taking responsibility for your emotions, your actions, and where you want to go. Yes, and believe that you can so do so much that you just, if you just set your mind to look at that bigger picture, yeah? just start uh, spending some time for yourself every day, just even 10 minutes, 15 minutes to connect, just ask yourself what I want, what I want, and maybe you will not, will not know answer what you really want. What is really your burning desire? But continue asking yourself. Just continue contemplating about like if everything I like if everything I had, if everything would be possible, what I would really love to do in this life. And I'm sure that if you start moving toward that direction, maybe not immediately, but in time, it will start coming up. Your spirit start again believing it, it, in you. <laughs> it will, yes. and it will. But you have to keep asking yourself those questions, Elena. And it's a big part. It's one of my goals for this year is to look inward and to ask myself questions. Why do I feel a certain way about something? Why did I let that trigger me? Why am I holding back on this thing? 
what what's what is my brain saying to all of this like and and i've learned to look inward by asking questions and as you said you may not get the answer straight away but your brain will will do its best to figure it out because it doesn't like contradiction when it feels there's a contradiction there your brain will have to figure it out so the more you ask it questions the more it'll realize the answers over time yes yes exactly thank you so much and uh, uh, before we we uh, finish this a uh, call i would like you to share maybe uh, your advice like because you have such experience with working with companies helping them to uh, transfer their vision to their reality uh, what you would be your advice to some such uh, business owners who maybe like achieve some results but thinking maybe we can do more so what would be your um, advice to them shape first well my my big advice to leaders is to first and foremost become the leader their business needs and and and, and i mean inward for themselves but for the people you are responsible for people so take that seriously and 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 plan for the the people's mental well-being success make sure you care about them treat them like family and the more you treat people like family the more they will help you because family look out for each other right and you build that culture of people helping because that's what families do helping people are happy people happy people are performing people so look inwards first get everything aligned i always say get everything under the hood aligned first then start building a strategy to move forward because now you've got the people to move with you. Thank you so much for being a wonderful, amazing guest and to be the, this light to the world and share your experience and helping companies to transform their vision to reality. Thank you thank so, you so much. much. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you so much, Alain. It was a pleasure to be here. You're most welcome. And I'm looking forward to meet you again in our future episodes. I look forward to it too. Have a great day. Yeah, welcome.